So yeah, everyone, with the first session getting over, we are moving on to our next session. Our next speaker is Dr. Subhashni, who has worked as a clinical pharmacist at Apollo Hospitals, Chennai, and has done her antimicrobial stewardship program at Believers Church Medical College and Hospital, Kerala. She is also a PharmD gold medalist in Tamil Nadu Dr. MGR Medical University and currently working as an infectious disease clinical pharmacist at Prashant Super Specialty Hospitals, Chennai. She is here with us to share her knowledge on multiple drug resistant organisms and carrier insights in infectious diseases. Over to you, Doctor. Uh, hi, all. Is it audible? Yes, ma'am, it's audible. Okay, uh, let me share my screen one second. Actually, I'm so glad to be a part of this Medodrix conference. I appreciate all the organizing committee members along with the three most eminent speakers for such an innovative session for we, the PharmD doctors and the future PharmD doctors. So my session is the MDRO, multi-drug resistant organism. Next slide. So the agenda for the MDRO is, uh, first we will uh, going to discuss about the nosocomial infection. The risk factors are related to the rise of nosocomial infection, route of transmission, site of infection, causes, pathological agents, uh, types of MDRO and its treatment, and uh, the prevention strategy. Next slide. Uh, so before uh, moving to the session, uh, let us uh, have a small discussion about what is infection, uh, colonization and contamination. Can anyone... Is it audible? Yes, ma'am, you're audible. Can anyone uh, please say what is the difference between infection, colonization, and contamination? Infection is an organism causing a disease in the human body, ma'am. Colonization, okay. it is present in a site, but it, it is not causing any disease or any symptoms of infection. Uh, contamination yeah. is while collecting a culture, uh, when it is when we, when we are not following sterile practices, uh, the organisms in our skin and in the environment will contaminate the cu culture we are collecting. That's contamination. Yeah, it's rightly said, yes. Uh, so the infection means uh, the presence of uh, microorganisms uh, which uh, forms any host inflammatory response which causes any sign and symptoms. And colonization is presence of microorganisms without any uh, host inflammatory response. And contamination is mainly through contaminated uh, blood products or contaminated instruments. Uh, so uh, it can spread through direct or indirect contact. Next slide, please. Uh, next one is uh, the normal flora. Uh, the normal flora is the normal microorganism present in our anatomical uh, uh, region of our body. Uh, for example, uh, in upper respiratory tract, Staphylococcus species is there, Haemophilus species, in skin, Staphylococcus species, Cutibacterium species, in GIT, anaerobes is present, Lactobacillus candida, in genital tract, Lactobacillus species, there, like that. Many uh, normal flora is normally present in our human body. Next slide, please. So now nosocomial infection means uh, it is an healthcare associated or hospital acquired infection. Uh, once uh, the nosocomial uh, infection is to be considered when uh, the infection is present, uh, which is developed at least after 48 hours of admission. So it is called as nosocomial infection. It does not present in, in the initial administration. Uh, these uh, infection can lead to serious problems like sepsis and death. Often nosocomial infection are caused by the multi-drug resistant pathogens through various invasive procedures, excessive or improper antibiotic use, and not following the hospital infection uh, precautions. So the nosocomial infections are preventable through guidelines issued by uh, CDC and WHO. Next slide, please. Uh, the nosocomial infection is mostly spread by Staphylococcus aureus species, and other common pathogens are E. coli, Enterococci, and Candida. Uh, the causes are uh, mostly the improper invasive procedure or non-invasive procedure, such as uh, urinary catheterization, surgical procedure, central venous catheter, and mechanical ventilation. So the main prevention of uh, nosocomial infection is uh, the frequent hand hygiene uh, steps and proper uh, usage of PPE use and removal of interleaving devices and uh, appropriate antibiotic use and routine disinfection. Next slide, please. So, uh, now uh, let us discuss about the MDRO. MDRO is defined as an organism resistant to more class of antimicrobial agents. Uh, so the prevalence of anti uh, MDRO has been discussed yesterday as briefly. Uh, next, the antibiotic resistant mechanism. Once uh, the germs can defeat antibiotics by a various mechanism, that is, the germs uh, gets alt uh, germs alters the antibiotic target site. The germ 
germs inactivate the antibiotics it limits the antibiotic uptake the germs pumps out the antibiotic and it modifies the antibiotic targets so these are the common mechanisms for the antibiotic resistance next slide please so uh, this is one of the culture report uh, in this the urine culture so shows the uh, the organism isolated as pseudomonas aeruginosa in this uh, you see the all the uh, cephalosporins monobactams uh, all these antibiotics uh, gets resistant so it is considered as an mtro so we can identify a uh, culture report by seeing this uh, type of antibiotics which is resistant so we can identify uh, whether it is mtro or not next slide please so causes of antibiotic resistance according to who guidelines uh, the cause of main antibiotic resistance are over prescribing of antibiotics and the patient not uh, finishing the treatment that is not propering the course of duration of uh, antibiotic and over use of antibiotic in livestock and fish farmings and poor infection controls in hospitals and lack of uh, hand hygiene uh, uh, hand hygiene techniques and lack of new antibiotics they don't have the awareness of uh, new antibiotics next slide please next is the risk factors related to the rise of nosocomial infection uh, due to the crowded hospital conditions and the uh, people with uh, no more number of immunocompromised and the appearance of new microorganisms in the hospitals and the uh, age factors also are, are risk factors for this uh, nosocomial infection and the prolonged length of hospitalization is also a risk factor excessive or improper use of broad spectrum antibiotics and a higher number of invasive device devices such as a um, central venous catheter urinary catheter etc and the patient if uh, he is having a comorbid condition such as diabetic cld uh, these are the risk factors of nosocomial infection so uh, let me ask uh, what is the difference between narrow spectrum and wide spectrum can you uh, please say any few examples can on the mic and please say is anyone okay let me see uh, pipters meropenem is a broad spectrum antibiotic uh, pipters it covers uh, bo both gram positive and gram negative coverage and meropenem is also a, a broad a broad spectrum it covers both gram positive and gram negative coverage and colistin uh, it is a narrow spectrum antibiotic so it uh, covers mainly gram negative and does not cover a gram positive coverage and vancomycin uh, it is an um, narrow spectrum antibiotic it covers only gram positive coverage and it does not cover gram negative coverage next slide please uh, the routes of transmission of nosocomial infection is through contact that is through direct contact uh, airborne or droplets uh, it is also contacted by uh, coughing sneezing uh, next it is contacted by vector 2 and common vehicles of transmission that is through contaminated blood products contaminated instruments contaminated food and water these are the common routes of transmission of uh, nosocomial infections next slide please so next one is the site of infections uh, the infections which can occur in a urinary tract it leads to urinary tract infections for example cystitis which occurs in the bladder urethritis which occur in the urethra phyllonephritis uh, the infection which occurs in the kidney and vaginitis which occurs in the vagina and uh, if the infection uh, if the bacteria enters in the surgical wound it may cause the surgical site of infections such as a uh, superficial incisional uh, surgical site of infection deep incisional surgical site of infection organ uh, or space uh, surgical site of infections next one is the infections uh, which occurs in the respiratory tract it also causes respiratory tract infections such as upper respiratory tract infection example laryngitis tonsillitis bronchitis and the infections which occur in the lower respiratory tract it causes bronchitis pneumonia bronchiolitis tracheitis these are some of the example and uh, the infections uh, which occur in the skin it mainly causes uh, cellulitis uh, necrotizing fasciitis etc and uh, the infection which occurs in the blood uh, may causes uh, lead to sepsis so these are some of the sites of infections next one is uh, the consequence of antimicrobial resistance uh, this is one of the main uh, factor uh, if uh, the patient gets a prolonged hospital stay he may additionally uh, leads to increase uh, considerable cost the patient gets more risky so uh, due to this antimicrobial resistance uh, the patient also has uh, the increase of morbidity and mortality rate so mdro related to nosocomial infection has a mortality rate of more than 50 percentage next slide please uh next one is the pathological agents of nosocomial infection uh, is uh, it has been explained uh, yesterday uh, very briefly the common pathogens are bacteria uh, viruses and fungi next slide please 
next one is the common types of mdro uh, the first one is the methicillin resistant cephalococcus aureus uh, which is known as mrsa and uh, the next one is a vancomycin resistant enterococcus vre carbapenem resistant enterobacteriaceae which is known as cre and methicillin susceptible cephalococcus aureus which is mssa and extended spectrum beta lactamase which is known as espl next slide please uh, so the methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Uh, this uh, the Staphylococcus aureus, a gram positive bacteria. So the name uh, itself symbolizes that the methicillin, that is the uh, anti uh, Staphylococcal uh, penicillin, uh, methicillin, and along with the oxacillin gets resistant. It is known as methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus along with this cefoxitin. Uh, it is a second generation cefalosporin. When it also gets resistant, we can say this is an MRSA. So, by the, uh, seeing the culture report, we can identify this bacteria uh, is an MRSA. Next one is the Cephalococcus aureus causes wide variety of infections uh, like abscess, UTA, pneumonia, endocarditis, osteomyelitis. Next slide, please. Uh, now, uh, let me uh, see the treatment for the MRSA. Uh, so one of the option for treat, uh, treatment of MRSA is ceftarolin, uh, which is a fifth generation cephalosporin. Uh, it has been uh, FDA approved on 2010. It has a, a good activity for MRSA. Uh, it also has a vancomycin intermediate cephalococcus aureus uh, uh, coverage, PRSA coverage, strep Cephalococcus coverage and no, it uh, does not have uh, pseudomonas and it does not have ESBL and no enterococcus coverage. Uh, so mainly, uh, no beta lactam has uh, activity except ceftorolin. Uh, clindamycin also has a good uh, coverage for MRSA. Then uh, daptomycin, it is a lipopeptide antibiotic, and it also uh, has a uh, good coverage for MRSA and is used for MRSA, MRSA bacteremia, endocarditis uh, infections. Uh, tetracycline, uh, it is a tetracycline antibiotics. Uh, it also can be a uh, good coverage for MRSA and VRE. Gram negative anaerobics and atypicals since it is a broad spectrum antibiotic. Next slide, please. Uh, next one is uh, the tetracycline, doxycycline, minocycline, which is a 30th inhibitor. Uh, it is a, a good coverage of, for MRSA and it uh, also has a broad spectrum. It covers both gram positive and gram negative. It is a good choice for uh, the skin and soft tissue infections and community acquired MRSA infection. Next one is the chloramphenicol. It is an 50 as reversible inhibitor. It also has a good coverage for MRSA, uh, enterococcus fasciums, uh, VRE, but it mainly does not coverage uh, pseudomonas and anaerobic coverage. This chloramphenicol uh, is not uh, popularly used. Next one is sulfonamides, uh, bactrian septa, which is a trimethoprim and sulfamethoxazole. It also has a good MRSA coverage and it is a good choice for the skin and soft tissue infection. Next one is a vancomycin. Uh, it is the gold standard for MRSA infection. Uh, next is uh, the linisolid, uh, which is available in oral IV. Uh, it is used for the uh, skin and soft, soft tissue infection suspected with MRSA and VRE infections. So uh, uh, the common antibiotics uh, given for the MRSA is uh, septerolin, clindamycin, daptomycin, tetracycline, tetracycline, chloramphenicol, sulfonamides, vancomycin, linisolid. So these are the drug of choice for the MRSA. Uh, so in this, um, a patient uh, for the culture report shows in the nasal swab, the organism isolated for uh, is MRSA. In this, uh, you can see that oxycillin, it shows resistant. So by seeing the culture report, we can identify that it is an MRSA. Next slide, please. Next one is uh, the methicillin suspectable Staphylococcus aureus. So uh, in this, uh, if the uh, antibiotic the such as oxycillin, methicillin, suffoxetin, is uh, susceptible or sensitive to it, it is uh, named as a MSSA. Next slide, please. Next, the treatment for MSSA means uh, so methicillin is definitely methicillin, nafcillin, oxacillin, and dacloxacillin is a drug of choice for MSSA infection. It is a good choice for cellulitis, osteomyelitis, endocarditis, and bacteremia from MSSA. Uh, then amoxicillin clavulinate augmenting it is also good coverage for MSSA, but that's amino penicillin, it does not have an MSSA coverage. Next slide, please. Uh, the first generation cephalosporin, that is cephazolin and cephalexin has an excellent uh, gram-positive coverage, uh, MSSA, but it uh, have minor gram-positive coverage. It is used for uh, non-prolent uh, cellulitis. 
so cefazolin uh, is a drug of choice for uh, MSSA. Next, this uh, fourth generation cephalosporin, cefepime, along with cefepirome, is also a good uh, choice for MSSA. In this, uh, uh, you can see a. Uh, uh, this Pascal share shows a cephalococcus uh, aureus in this uh, oxazoline sensitive. So we can uh, uh, see it is an MSSA. Next one is vancomycin resistant enterococcus species. Uh, the enterococcus species, uh, namely enterococcus fecalis and enterococcus species, the particular uh, antibiotic vancomycin, which is uh, shown to be resistant, it is known as vancomycin resistant enterococcus species. So the treatment option for uh, vancomycin resistant uh, uh, enterococcus uh, or linezolid, uh, this is oxazolidone antibiotic. Uh, it covers all gram positive <coughs> and uh, VRE, uh, VRE infections. And the uh, daptomycin, it is a lipopeptide antibiotics. Uh, so it also covers the enterococcus uh, VRE infections. Uh, then carbapenem, uh, the carbapenem does not cover MRSA, VRE. So it mainly covers ESBL and SPICE. SPICE means Seracea, Protease, Indole, Citrobacter, Intrabacter, Asnectobacter organisms. So the carbapenems uh, mainly act against uh, the ESBL organisms and spicy organisms. So it does not cover the MRSA and VRM, atypical and stenotropomonas too. Next is ceftaroline, uh, the fifth uh, generation cephalosporin. It covers VRE. It is a good for enterococcus fecalis, uh, but it is not as good for enterococcus fecium. Uh, next to the phosphomycin oral uh, uh, form, it is a bactericidal agent. It is also used for uh, VRE and MRSA. And uh, it also has a, uh, it, since it is a broad spectrum, it also has an effect on gram negative, including pseudomonas and some ESBLs. Next, the coenopressin, dafloprescine, it's a septogramins. It covers MRSA and VRE due to enterococcus fecium, but it does not cover enterococcus fecalis. Let me ask, uh, what is the other uh, fifth generation cephalosporin? Can anyone say? Ceftobiprogram. <laughs> okay, fine. Is there any? Cefidorocolum. Yeah, 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 okay, fine. Next slide, please. Next one is uh, carbapenem resistant enterobacteriaceae. Uh, any E. coli, Klebsiella oxytoca, or Klebsiella pneumonia, enterobacter species, which is resistant to carbapenem. The carbapenem, in, uh, we can see imipenem, meropenem, doripenem, ertapenem, uh, which is resistant to this uh, uh, enterobacteriaceae. It is termed as carbapenem resistant enterobacteriaceae. Next slide, please. Next one is the treatment uh, for uh, CRE. Uh, Nitrofurantoin, trimethoprin, sulfamethoxazole, ciprofloxacin, and levo levofloxacin are the preferred treatment option for uh, uncomplicated cystitis and complicated UTA, which is caused mainly by CRE. And a uh, single dose of uh, uh, aminoglycosides, uh, cholestine, ceftazidem, avibactam, cefidorocol, and oral phosphomycin is also an alternative option for uh, this uncomplicated cystitis and pyelonephritis complicated UTA, which is caused mainly by CRE. Uh, cholestin, uh, cholestin also can be uh, can only be considered as an alternative agent for uncomplicated CRE cystitis. Uh, since uh, all the beta-lactam agents remain preferred treatment option for CRE, antibiotics such as tegicycline, ervacycline are alternative options when beta-lactam agents are either not active or unable to be tolerated. Uh, in this, uh, tetracycline uh, derivatives are not suggested for uh, the treatment of CRE associated with UTR or bloodstream infections. Uh, in this uh, culture report, you can see uh, urine culture shows E. coli. In this, uh, mainly the carbapenem, mero, imi, and erta shows resistance. So we can identify this it is an CRE. Next one is the extended spectrum beta lactamase. Uh, so the some bacteria that produces an enzyme called ESBL. So uh, this uh, ESBL can break down some antibiotics, mainly penicillin, cephalosporin, and monobactam that is astrionum. So uh, when this, um, uh, mainly this ESBL uh, are caused by E. coli and Klebsiella pneumonia. So E. coli and Klebsiella pneumonia infections are mainly treated by uh, the spensin and cephalosporin. But when this bacteria uh, that produces ESBL, so it causes infections that can be no longer treated by these antibiotics. So in this case, uh, penicillin and cephalosporin can't be given. Next slide, please. 
So the proven treatment for ES fail is carbapenem. So carbapenem is a proven therapeutic option. Uh, Imipenem, meropenem, etapenem uh, can be given uh, for the ES fail producing organisms. Uh, then uh, the combination along with cephalosporin and beta lactamase inhibitor uh, can be given along uh, can be given for this uh, ASBL. That is ceftalozone, tazobactam, and ceftazidim avibactam uh, can be a novel agent uh, for ASBL producing organisms. But uh, peptas uh, does not uh, since uh, tazobactam is a beta lactamase inhibitor, but it has an excellent anaerobic coverage, but it does not have an ASBL coverage. So it's mainly not preferred for an ASBL. Next, uh, phosphomycin and nitroferentoin are uh, used in cystitis caused by ESBL producing E. coli in complicated UTA. Uh, next, if the, for the treatment of uh, the uh, hospital, uh, sorry, healthcare uh, associated pneumonia, the hospital acute pneumonia, and ventilator associated pneumonia, in patients with a high risk of MDRO, an empirical 2 to 3 drug regimen uh, can be given. Uh, that is anti MRSA antibiotic vancomycin or lemisolid and anti pseudomonal beta lactam antibiotic. Uh, percent tazobactam carbapenem but not etapenem and acetonem 2 double coverage for uh, agent for pseudomonas uh, such as aminoglycosides ciprofloxacin levofloxacin and fluoroquinolones also have an additional uh, advantage of uh, atypical coverage next one is the risk factors for mdro uh, the main risk factors for the mdro is uh, the antibiotic therapy uh, if the patient is uh, taking for uh, preceding 90 days uh, it is a risk factor and hospital stay for uh, greater than four days and invasive procedure uh, has been uh, four to six days greater and uh, if the patient is in continuous uh, ICU unit and uh, if the patient has a high frequency of antibiotic resistance in the community uh, if uh, the patient is having a malnutrition or uh, if the patient is immunosuppressive disease or uh, knee therapy is ongoing if uh, he also have a known colonization by MDRO uh, if the patient is an admission from a long-term care, chronic dialysis, tracheostomy, open skin wound. Uh, if the patient uh, has been living with a family member who has an MDRO pathogen, these are some of the risk factors for the MDRO. Uh, next one is a failure of MDRO and prevention control. Uh, the uh, first one is a lack of education. Uh, if the uh, if uh, the elder or uh, people are unaware of education, uh, they, uh, it may lead to MDRO. A non-prudent use of antibiotics and too uh, low healthcare uh, staffing levels can also lead to the failure of MDRO prevention control. Lack of financial resources, a lack of diagnosis, uh, typing and screening lack of isolation capacity and uh, delayed uh, the begin of uh, bundle implementation lack of outbreak control if the patient is uh, transferring between the healthcare institution also uh, leads to this uh, mdro and um, the source of mdro outside the healthcare facilities and mainly the lack of compliances with the hand hygiene so the prevention strategy for MDR in hospital is mainly by a proper administrative support, a proper education program, and a proper use of antimicrobials, and a proper hospital infection control surveillance, and standard and contact precautions and environmental measures. Next slide, please. Administrative support, uh, a proper administrative support, uh, a proper uh, recommendation of uh, hand hygiene uh, uh, pre precautions, uh, standard and contact precautions should be followed. Uh, then education program regarding uh, the proper uh, way of hand hygiene uh, and the proper antibacterial prescribing patterns uh, should be educated uh, to the healthcare facilities for the prevention of MDRO. Uh, so these are the five uh, main uh, 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 steps for the MDR uh, hand hygiene uh, is uh, before uh, the aseptic procedure, after aseptic procedure, before touching a patient, after touching the patient. Uh, so uh, during this time, um, we should uh, do a proper hand hygiene uh, techniques. Next slide, please. Next one is the judicious use of antimicrobial agents. Uh, the antibacterial patterns uh, should be a uh, narrow spectrum instead of broad spectrum. It should be a narrow spectrum, a specific uh, 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 for the specific bacteria, uh, the antibiotic should be given. Uh, towards treating infections and not contaminants, and use of antibiotics in proper uh, duration of therapy, and restricting use of uh, broad spectrum. So these are the judicious use of uh, antimicrobial agents. Next one is surveillance. Uh, proper hospital infection surveillance uh, should be uh, maintained throughout the critical locations and um, uh, the patient uh, should be monitored whether he has a previous uh, antibiotic exposure history and uh, the patient should be monitored whether he has a presence of underlying diseases. Uh, a prolonged duration of stay should be monitored. Exposure to other MDRO colonized patients uh, that also should be monitored frequently. 
and a patient transferred from other uh, facility known to have a high prevalence of enduric hernia and a history of recent uh, hospitalized if the patient is recent uh, hospitalized within 90 days that also should be monitored to see whether the enduric is uh, at the risk next slide please so these are the enduro topic is there any doubts in this Is there any doubt? Can I move to the next session? No, ma'am. You can proceed. Okay. Uh, next, uh, let uh, we see the career insights in infectious disease. Uh, so, my the fellowship program in India after form D. So, be the form D uh, who are, uh, want to be an expert in the infectious disease. can proceed to the fellowship program in india after our uh, form d so it is a specialized training program for all the healthcare professionals who wish to become an expert in the field of infectious disease so during the fellowship programs uh, these fellows get additional uh, training in the diagnosis treatments and preventions of infectious disease including those caused by bacteria virus fungi and parasites so they uh, closely work with experience infectious disease specialists both inpatient and outpatient so they gain much more knowledge in the infectious disease so i i will say this fellowship program in india is a good uh, career pathway for the form dies who wish to uh, shine uh, in the field of infectious disease Uh, next, the fellowship uh, in infectious disease. Uh, it is in uh, Tamil Nadu in uh, Christian Medical College, Bellu. Uh, so yesterday we came to uh, speaker uh, Dr. Franklin. Uh, he has done the fellowship in infectious disease. So this a fellowship in uh, general infectious disease and tobacco stewardship course uh, is a, a, a year-long distance learning course. It involves both self-learning and contact sessions. So the main uh, aim of this fellowship program uh, to provide a responsible approach to use of antibiotics. uh so the implementation of effective antibiotic stewardship program has been uh, taught uh, in this uh, fellowship uh, programs so this uh, course will enhance the uh, healthcare professional skill to improve the patient care Uh, next one is the uh, Indian Pharmaceutical Association. It also provide a fellowship program. Uh, it also uh, mainly for uh, be the uh, Form D uh, graduates. Uh, if you are interested uh, in a uh, Form D uh, in uh, doing this fellowship, uh, we can definitely go for this uh, in uh, Indian Pharmaceutical Association. Uh, Recent, uh, they will select ten uh, fellows uh, throughout globally. So they will uh, offer a highly reputed tertiary hospital across the cities in India, and uh, along with the uh, monthly stipend also will be given. so if they are uh, offering a highly reputed tertiary hospital we will work under a infectious disease consultant so will uh, the duration of this uh, uh, ip uh, infection uh, sorry indian pharmaceutical association uh, fellowship duration is 12 months so we will have a good uh, idea uh, regarding the infectious disease so i think this also a good uh, career option uh, for uh, us next there is a residency program in clinical pharmacy for the infectious disease in jss academy of medical research uh, that is in uh, mysuru uh, so it also provides uh, the residency program uh, it's uh, actually a, a two years residency program uh, it includes uh, the um, uh, year 1 and year 2 uh, it also has some uh, syllabus uh, that is in uh, uh, in first syllabus uh, uh, they will discuss about general medicines general surgery nephrology psychiatry cardiology pulmonology uh, in um, uh, in second year they will uh, focus on clinical microbiology pediatric infectious disease critical care uh, antimicrobial stewardship uh, adult and geriatric infectious disease surgical antimicrobial stewardships so this residency program in cp is also good option uh, for us so we ha we can definitely enhance our uh, career uh, since it is an uh, pg degree for us next slide please so uh, as we as i said before the duration is 2 years it is an annual system it includes uh, two syllabus uh, that is residency program year 1 uh, which includes uh, for 12 months and residency program year 2 which includes for 12 months the they will take the intake of students for uh, uh, nearly 40 uh, and it is a pg degree course the stipend also will be paid for the period of 24 months Uh, next one is the specialization related to infectious disease so all uh, came to know about the board exams right can anyone say about uh, what is the board exam board certified exams related to pharmacies is it audible 
Yes, ma'am, you are audible. Okay. Uh, there is a many more board exams related for us pharmacists, uh, such as board certified uh, pharmacotherapy specialist, board certified oncology pharmacist. So related to infectious disease, there is a board exam, namely infectious disease pharmacy specialty certification (BCIDP). So the pharmacists who specialize in the use of microbiology and pharmacology to develop and implement and monitor drug regimens that incorporate antimicrobials. to optimize therapy for the patients uh, this main uh, use for this is to develop antimicrobial therapies to for the direct patient care to lead antimicrobial stewardship and to improve the public health so and this board certified exam is a good option uh, for uh, us uh, for the eligibility criteria is uh, we should uh, uh, complete the four years of uh, clinical pharmacist in that we should at least have the 50 percentage of uh, for us in uh, some antimicrobial stewardship program infectious disease uh, Uh, pro, uh, we should be involved at least in fifty percentage of the time spent for the antimicrobials uh, in our uh, four years. So these are the basic eligibility criteria for the BCIDP. Next one is the certification related to infectious disease. Uh, so there are uh, some of the certified uh, courses uh, available uh, for us uh, to enhance uh, and to know more, uh, much more about the antibiotics. Uh, as we know the world health organization it is uh, responsible for uh, providing leadership in global health matters so this also provides uh, some e certified courses such as antimicrobial resistance and infection prevention and control antimicrobial stewardship a competency based approach antimicrobial stewardship program in healthcare facilities in low and middle income countries surgical site infections who policy guidance on uh, integrated antimicrobial stewardship activities so these are some of the courses are uh, like uh, in who so definitely you can utilize this uh, sessions next one is alison alison is also an international recognized e learning platform with a wide range of courses and certificates it also uh, provides an um, courses uh, for us uh, regarding the infection control healthcare so it also uh, deals with many infectious uh, diseases so de definitely you can uh, learn about this courses next one is the standard uh, stanford university school of medicine Uh, it has a long tradition of leadership in medical research education effective clinical therapy uh, it is also an um, e learning platform with a wide range of courses and certificates uh, that is a uh, it provides an antibiotic stewardship courses it also provides an ant, uh, epidemiology of infectious disease uh, then optimizing antibiotic therapy with time outs updates uh, to prescribe or not to prescribe antibiotics and outpatient infections antimicrobial stewardships improving clinical outcomes by optimization of antibiotic practice these are some of the courses in stanford university school of medicine it is an e certified course definitely uh, you can uh, know much more about this and uh, you will have a greater idea about antibiotics antibiotic stewardships infectious disease etc next one is the global health network it is also an e learning platform uh it also provide uh, some uh, wide range of courses and certificates uh, the name of the courses are uh, first one is appropriate antibiotic use at the pharmacy cp series and understanding antibiotic resistance the problem of antibiotic resistance and the six steps for sustainable implementation of national action plans of antimicrobial resistance uh, who costing and budgeting tool for national acting plans on antibiotic resistance so, so these courses also uh, gives us a much more idea about antibiotic resistance so you can definitely uh, know about this courses and you have you can uh, learn a greater idea on antibiotic resistance next one is uh, oasis health it is also in a global health network platform it provides a provides as a course namely antimicrobial stewardship a course for healthcare provides providers so definitely uh, you can go for this uh, certified courses it will definitely enhance your uh, career thank you thank you for your time and attention i think this uh, will be useful for you thank you ma'am okay so participants can ask your doubts now uh, if you don't mind just like i can can i just add a few point about this board certificate program dr subhash yeah 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 very uh, yeah, you can say so ma'am has explained about this uh, um board certificate program which has 
three criteria right so once after your pg y2 you could directly apply for your board certificate um, still we have post graduate programs from jss and the manipal but uh, those are not ashp accredited so if you feel like once after completing your amsp program from your jss or manipal and then you can apply it, apply for bca uh, board certified uh, specialist you can't do it because the board the residency program should be completed from the institution accredited institution which uh, uh, with ashp accredited institution so which is not available in india that's the problem we can't go with uh, residency from india okay so that's a recommendation which been given by the board certified itself so you have to complete your board uh, post graduate program from the ashp accredited university not or not a, uh, a simple university which provides uh, uh, pg uh, residency programs okay sir thank you for the information ma'am i actually have a doubt ma'am uh, yeah. you told about the ams and id fellowship in cmc ma'am so yeah. are there any eligibility criteria like we should we should be having a, a, a work experience of clinical pharmacist or even freshers could apply for it ma'am uh, recently uh, i saw a post uh, in this uh, year they asked uh, one year experience in antimicrobial stewardship so i think there is a uh, experience needed for uh, going for cmc and even you have to clear some my exams i guess before entering cmc antimicrobial stewardship yeah yeah there is an exam okay. is there any doubts sorry for the interruption ma'am yeah uh, for cmc i think there is no experience required because last year as a fresher i have given the exam i have cleared the exam also but okay. i did not get i did not get placed there because my course was not completed yet Okay, okay. So for CMC, they have a exam. Uh, uh, usually, and in the month of May. Okay. But it doesn't require any experience. Even a fresher can give the exam. Okay, okay. Thank you for your information. So welcome, welcome. Oh, Is there I any other one, doubts? I have one more doubt, ma'am. Yes. Uh, ma what type of hospitals like in quaternary care or in tertiary care and what types of what type of hospital they are hiring a uh, i infectious disease clinical pharmacist in chennai they will hire in uh, tertiary care hospitals like uh, may, uh, mostly i think uh, i came to know a clinical pharmacist who was working in a hindu mission he was uh, placed in a royal uh, care hospital so they mainly they will choose a tertiary care hospital only Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Is there any other doubts? I think no more doubts. Okay. Thank you so much. I thank uh, this Melotrix team uh, for giving such an opportunity for me. I also thank all the most eminent speakers. that i had a chance to be a part of it so i thank you uh, everyone for this opportunity we also thank you ma'am for your sessions and uh, your session on the career insights and in infectious diseases actually it will help everyone who have planned the future in infectious diseases ma'am okay. thank you so much thank you yes ma'am shall i wind up the session yes ma'am sure thank you so much yes ma'am so participants before winding up our day today we have a certain announcement to be made i hope you are aware of the competitions that are being conducted by our team on a, on the occasion of infectious disease pharmacists day so here are the rules to be followed for a id pharma quest so the quest is happening on may 20th 2024 at 7 pm and it's an online online quiz so the participants will be required to answer 20 multiple choice questions within 15 minutes of the start time late submissions will be automatically rejected the quiz link will be opening at 7 pm and will be closed at 7:15 pm but you will receive the link by 6:50 pm itself 
So in order to receive further more updates about this quiz, you might be needing, you might need to join into the WhatsApp group. So in order, so kindly adhere to the timings and make prior arrangements for participating in the quiz. So there will be no negative marks and each correct answer will be carrying one mark. Questions will be based on antimicrobials, antimicrobial resistance, infectious diseases, clinical microbiology, antimicrobial stewardship and case scenarios. So rules are that participants must complete the quiz within the allotted time. Each participant can attempt the quiz only once. Kindly try to fill out the quiz on your own and do not have any help. Any form of cheating or plagiarism will result in disqualification. Results will be announced at 8 p.m. At, at the same day, May 20th, 2024. Results will be based on participants with the highest mark scored in a shorter time, shorter time limit. So top 10 scorers will be selected for the final round, which will be an online interactive quiz competition. Top 10 selected participants will alone receive a mail with the rules for the final round on May 20th, 2024. So this is the first announcement and the next competition is that uh, next are the rules for the poster competitions. Participants are allowed to make posters using paint, sketch or digital mode. The content should be unique. They should be, there is no specific size for the poster. The theme of the poster is World ID Pharmacist Day. Themed Join the Fight, Pharmacist Engaging Communities in Antibiot Antibiotic Stewardship. So the contents must be submitted on or before the due dates. Last date for submission, 25, 2024. That's May 20. Submission mail ID, medodix at gmail.com. And the results will be announced on May, 20, 20, May 22, 2024. So any violation of the rules might result in immediate disqualification. And the next announcement is based on participation certificate. Participants will be receiving a participation patient certificate only if they have attended a minimum of two sessions. It is mandatory, mandatory to fill the Google form link given in the chat box to get your certificate. And uh, after filling out the form, the e-certificate will be sent to your email ID before 25th of May 2024. So you might find the link in the chat box. And the fourth announcement is that our team Medodrix has opened new forums in three specialties, nephrology, oncology and infectious diseases. So you might, ex so you might expect uh, more programs, more conferences and more courses in the future. And we request all your support in that. Hello guys, I want to add up another announcement here. To make us better understand your learnings in this two days conference, please fill the post conference survey link. I will post it in the chat box. Please follow the link. So the link for the clinical program on infectious diseases also is posted on the chat box. So participate, uh, they are requested to fill out the forms. So that's all about the announcement. And thus the second day of the conference has come to an end. As we draw the curtains on this MD Medorix conference on uh, infectious disease pharmacy, I, expand, I extend my heartfelt gratitude to every speakers and participants who have been very interactive in this whole session. So your interaction and dedication alone made this conference a huge success. And I and I actually mention a special thanks to all the speakers, Dr. M. Tangapandi, Dr. Franklin Jose, Dr. Vishwapal Sivakumar, Dr. Shubhasmi for the valuable time in their conference besides their busy schedule. And I'm sure the knowledge and clarity that we gain from this conference will be guiding us throughout our journey in, in infectious diseases. A special thanks to the members of Medodrix, Dr. John Felix, Mr. Stiram, Ms. Vaishnavi and other members of the team for their untiring efforts to make this conference a huge success. Thank you once again. And participants, throughout our time together, we've been looking so much deep into all about the antimicrobial stewardship. It's actually not a responsibility but like a moral imperative to preserve the efficacy of antibiotics for the generations to come. As a guardian of public health, we must also embrace stewardship practices to combat the rise of antimicrobial resistance. So let the insights gained and the connections forged during this conference 
propel us forward in our mission to combat infectious diseases. Thank you once again for your unwavering commitment. Until we meet again in the another Medodix conference. So thank you and goodbye.